previously, we exported out a skeleton proxy, which would work with itself, but it would only show as far as the debug rendering of the skeleton. And then we also added the skin, which is the actual geometry that it renders. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to expand upon what we built prior, and we're going to push everything out into a chr params file that we can nest an animation as far as what we've made here so it works. So we have a few things that need to be done. We need to be able to export the animation. We need to set up the chr params file. And we also need to expose the skeleton within the character tool to the skeleton alias. So put it in the list. To get started, what we'll end up doing is simply going into our BIP and we change that. Let's go to make sure it's on one. Go back, and if you press Shift E, this will only key the rotates. So we're going to try and do Shift E here, and then let's move it to 60. Shift E there. And then what I'm going to do is bend this down and press Shift E again. And then down here, let's change the time. Timeline to 60 total. So if we go and look, we can see that we have this nice little bent cylinder. Now, the next thing that we have to do is actually apply this to the animation manager. So going into the export tab, we can go ahead and click the scale proxy. And what we want to do is go to our animation manager and create a new animation. Let's call this bend, and the start and end frame of it will be. 60, and I think it's on 1. So the root behind this will be BIP01. And then the path that we want to go to is the CHR skin path. But we could actually do this a different way. Sometimes what people like to do is they mimic the same thing as CryEngine does, and you want to have it set up immediately. I think we'll wait for the second, and we'll just export it out as it is right here. We'll save that directory and add it. Go ahead and close. And pretty much all we have to do here is we want to export our anims. So we're going to click Export, Exported Fine. And what we can do is close this. And we can see that we have an I underscore calf file inside of this. And the next thing that we need to look at is creating a CHR params file, which if I go back to the game SDK, and I open up an objects care pack file. So we're going to open the archive. Human. And let's go to generic. And we're going to choose this CHR params file. So let's drag that off into the desktop. Close this. Let's go back to objects, CHR skin. And we'll drag this inside of here. So let's keep in mind that our CHR file is called scale proxy. So let's rename our CHR params file to match that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this with Notepad. And we see all of these different things in here. And many of these things completely are worthless to us as far as what we're doing right here. So what we want to do is just delete, let's get rid of the IK definition, the LOD stuff, the bounding box stuff, and pretty much all we're really looking for is this animation list. So this animation list is looking for something in this area, and it's also looking for an events database. So it's saying, I'm pointing to a player.chr params file. So let's go and look at what that is back into our game SDK, and we open up the animations pack this time. We can open up that archive, and if we go into the human mail chr params file, this is the other one. So let's drag that out and see what it's doing. So opening up this one as well, we can see that we have an animation list. We have uh, database that we're looking for, we have something called a file path where it's going to animations human mail, and then we have all these asterisks. And the reason that we have to begin with, we can just remove the events database. It's not important. 
And we can actually remove the comb and bsplace files as well. It's outside of the instruction of this. The main thing that we need to look at is the file path, which is being stored right here. And it's pointing to animations human mail. So maybe I can go and click and create a new folder. We'll call this animations. Tutorial. So we'll change this to just stri strictly animations tutorial. And then in that path, it's looking for a CAF file. So that's really all it's doing as far as the CHR params can be found here. Yet, yeah, let's also remember that inside of here, we can state exactly this CHR params file that we want it to source as well. So animations. Tutorial, and we'll call this one Tutorial as well. So, pretty much what it's looking for is that specific include. So, it points to that include and then it goes to that local area for that CHR params file. So, let's go ahead and save this, and then what we want to actually do is save this as well. So, let's go ahead and save it as. Computer, CryEngine, Game SDK, Animations, Tutorial, and this one was called Tutorial as well. And I don't want to save it as a XML, I want to save it as a CHR params file. Click Save on that. If we go in here, we now have a tutorial.chr params file. Just sourcing properly to that. So if I close that and I save this, see what's happening right here. So XML, okay. So it's all sourcing properly. So if I go back into Maya, I'm going to go to my animation manager and edit that. We'll go up. Animations tutorial, that's the directory I want to go to. Let's edit, close, export all the animations. Let's go ahead and export all just to be sure. Generate the material files. And now we're ready to go inside of CryEngine.